Welcome to the Weekly Bat. Welcome to the Weekly Bat for the week of July 10th, 2020. Kicking off the week with a partnership announcement, Brave and Bitflyer, the number one exchange in Japan, partner to develop a crypto asset wallet for Brave browser users and launch a joint marketing campaign. Bitflyer Inc., which operates Japan's number one cryptocurrency exchange by Bitcoin trading volume, and Brave have announced a partnership between Bitflyer and Brave Software International SEZC, a subsidiary of Brave Software which performs token operations, to provide a service for both companies' users as of today. Bitflyer will be Brave's first partner in the crypto asset wallet space in Japan. In April, Bitflyer listed Basic Attention Token, a utility token integrated within the Brave browser. To further strengthen our cooperation, we will start developing a crypto asset wallet for Brave browser users. We will also launch a joint marketing campaign to expand the recognition of cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology among our customers and to improve customer convenience. Up next, we have another new partnership to announce. Brave partners with NYAX, N-Y-I-A-X, the first futures trading marketplace for digital ad contracts to connect users and advertisers utilizing blockchain and privacy. With CCPA enforcement in effect, advertisers can reserve inventory without tracking. Brave and NYAX, the world's first and most active upfronts marketplace and advanced contract management exchange by volume and users, today announced a first-of-its-kind partnership that will enable advertisers to connect with consumers in a way that prioritizes personal choice and respects new privacy legislation. Under the terms of the partnership, ad contracts traders in NIAX's upfront marketplace are now able to reserve or buy future inventory options that guarantee their brand advertisements reach only Brave users who have opted in to see the promotions and receive rewards via Brave's basic attention token system. Making Brave's inventory available on NIAX's platform provides Brave with incremental revenue opportunities and the ability to strike guaranteed upfront deals with NIAX's buyer partners, as well as a year-round lead as they compete for the best brand partnerships. What's unique about Brave's model is consumers are rewarded for their attention, providing customers the ability to prioritize preferences and opt into privacy-respecting ads based on their own personal interest. Up next, we have some more very exciting news. Our partner, The Giving Block, has added support for Basic Attention Token, or BAT. Here's a little bit from a post they released on their blog this week. The Giving Block is excited to announce support for BAT in our donation widget. All nonprofits working with The Giving Block will be able to accept BAT donations by default. This brings 50 plus nonprofits into the Brave ecosystem and gives BAT hodlers a tax efficient way to donate. The Brave community has long been one of the most generous. Brave has been a longtime partner and has provided many of our clients with ad grants so they can engage with the cryptocurrency community more directly. Many users choose to tip their browser earned BAT rewards to our nonprofits. We encourage all nonprofits on our platform to verify their website with Brave as a way to accept donations. This will now give users a way to donate on chain through our widget and generate an automated tax receipt. So just FYI, this means that users can now donate BAT from the crypto wallet in Brave, in addition to providing support to verified causes via Brave Rewards. Brendan Eich, Brave CEO, will be presenting at Binance's Off the Charts virtual conference on July 14th, 2020. Here are some details from the Off the Charts Eventbrite page. Join Binance as we kick off our third anniversary with one of our biggest blockchain events of the year. Get the latest news and updates on all things blockchain and crypto, and take an exclusive look at what's coming next at our Off the Charts virtual conference, a blockbuster 10-hour live event with multi-regional programming that brings together 80-plus influential speakers, including leading blockchain and crypto innovators, business and technology leaders, influential academics, and key policymakers. Expect to hear the latest insights on the blockchain ecosystem from some of the industry's most prominent leaders and visionaries. Join our can't-miss event with powerful talks, breakthrough panels, opportunities to win prizes, and much more. The link where you can register for free for the event is in the Weekly Bat blog post. Up next, 
upcoming guest AMA with Sam Kazimian, co-founder and president, and David Leibowitz, VP of Business Development at Everipedia, a blockchain-based digital encyclopedia and project building world-class consumer dApps and DeFi apps. Sam Kazimian and David Leibowitz will be on BAT Project on Thursday, July 16th, 2020 from 12 p.m. to 1 p.m. Pacific time to answer your questions about Everipedia and its work with Brave and to share more about the team's latest project, Predict, a decentralized prediction market offering a user experience that rivals that of traditional centralized alternatives. Listeners of the Back Community Podcast may remember David from a few episodes back. We did an interview with him. So if you want to hear more from David and you'd like to hear from Sam Kazemian, who's one of the co-founders of Everipedia and Predict, tune in on Thursday to the AMA. You can submit questions now or on the day of. And as a bonus, we are doing a swag giveaway. So each question submitted for the AMA counts as a giveaway entry for a chance to win some official Bat and Brave merch from the new Brave Swag Store. Up next, Brave's Johnny Ryan, Chief of Policy, was on the Video Week podcast, episode 10. Tune in to hear Johnny discuss privacy, as well as his personal motivation in the privacy debate, and his views on whether privacy regulators have any real teeth when it comes to enforcement. We've linked the episode in the Weekly Bat blog post, of course. Up next, we have a sweepstakes. Enter TAP Network's sweepstakes using Bat and instantly win a digital gift card. Brave users with Uphold Verified wallets can now enter TAP Network's sweepstakes to win digital gift cards for Walmart or Amazon. More brands and prizes to come. To enter the sweepstakes, head over to the TAP sweepstakes page and choose the sweepstakes you want to enter. You can then enter as many times as you desire. It costs just 10 cents in BAT per entry. Winners are chosen by TAP at random through a digital sweepstakes drawing system and will receive their digital gift card prize via email. If you haven't verified your Brave Rewards wallet, the TAP Marketplace provides a range of options for you to redeem your earned BAT for gift cards, sweepstakes, and to support causes. Up next, this week in Sponsored Images. This week, Brave welcomes Kudo to the new tab page. Kudo Mobile is a Canadian mobile flanker brand launched by TELUS in 2008 and is oriented toward a younger customer base. Kudo offers a flexible service that doesn't require fixed contracts, so customers can get the phone they want under the terms that are right for them. Learn more at kudomobile.com. In addition, Nexo, eToro, Crypto.com, BlockFi, and Bybit return to the new tab page this week following the success of their recent campaigns. Our growing list of new tab page sponsors includes Verizon, PayPal, Newegg, Western Digital, Chipotle, Khan Academy, Tezos, Upland, and more. Brave Creator Spotlight, in partnership with Everipedia. Our featured creator of the week is none other than Brave's very own Yan Zhu, security engineer, hacker, DJ, producer, open web standards author, etc. Yan Zhu is a modern Renaissance woman. By day, she is Brave's chief information security officer, or CISO, writing, auditing, and tightening up feature code to ensure that user privacy and security are always paramount. By night, she goes by Azuki and can be found mixing and producing Electro Deep House beats or tweeting pics of her pet bunny, who shares the same name. In between GitHub commits, Jan enjoys sharing her adventures in scratch baking with her 69k Twitter followers. Before Brave, Jan earned a BS in physics at MIT, worked as a security engineer for Yahoo, was a staff technologist at the Electronic Frontier Foundation, or EFF, and was recognized as one of Forbes' 30 Under 30. In addition, Jan has made notable contributions to projects like HTTPS Everywhere, Let's Encrypt, Secure Drop, Privacy Badger, Firefox, and the Tor Project. If you aren't already a fan and you want to learn more about Jan Zhu, in the Weekly Bat blog post, we have linked her Everypedia article, her YouTube channel, her SoundCloud, her GitHub, and her Twitter. Be sure to check her out. She is truly awesome. Client Updates This week, the Desktop Nightly channel progressed to version 1.13.6. 
the desktop dev channel progressed to version 1.13.83, the desktop beta channel graduated to version 1.12.82, and Brave for iOS graduated to version 1.18.1. Stay ahead of bugs and benefit from all the latest updates and fixes by keeping your Brave browser updated to the latest version at all times. To update your Brave browser on desktop, go to brave colon double slash help. On mobile, if you don't receive updates automatically, you can manually update your Brave browser app from the Play or iOS app stores. Brave Team Tweets Brave's Luke Mulks comments on the new partnership between Brave and Nyax. This is a pretty neat partnership, he tweets. I recall meeting with the Nyax team when we were preparing to launch the ads preview. I was excited that we were getting to the preview phase, even more now to see the partnership actualized in the wild. Someone in the community tweets, Is there a way to make a Chromebook default to Brave rather than Chrome? Asking as a parent who plans to homeschool two kids and would prefer to protect my kids' data. Hmm, good question. One of our Android engineers, Sergey Zukovsky, replies, Yes, you can set Brave as default. You install it from Google Play on the Android phone, and after that, you click some link that will have a dialog, and it asks you if you want to open with Brave or with Chrome, and you can pick Open with Brave always. That and Brave in the news. This first piece is from The Register. Dutch national broadcaster saw ad revenue rise when it stopped tracking users. It's meant to work like that, right? Johnny Ryan, chief policy officer at privacy-focused browser Brave, has reported on how ad revenue increased when Dutch national broadcaster NPO stopped running third-party trackers on its online video website. From a marketing perspective, targeted advertising is supposedly a dream realized. Why waste money showing ads to people who are not likely to become customers? The success of Facebook is based on the ability of advertisers to define an audience by location, age, sex, personal interests, and more. Per Google, targeting gives you the ability to show your ads to people with specific interests, namely, people who are interested in your products and services, and to show them relevant ads. Another idea is tracking the customer journey from first seeing an ad to the final purchase. Great for marketing, but there are concerns about ad targeting based on both privacy and controversial matters like disinformation and manipulative political campaigns. Ryan's report questions the core assumption that targeted advertising is more effective. In January 2020, when NPO switched from tracking-based targeting to contextual targeting, revenue actually increased 61% more than January 2019. In February, revenue increased 76% over the previous year, he wrote. For the rest of the story, you will have to check out the weekly Bat blog post. News you should know. This piece was pulled from the Week in Ethereum News newsletter, and it is a post from MyCrypto's blog. Intercepting and saving $5,000 worth of fished crypto. And here's an excerpt from the blog post. We write a lot about phishing, but it's not every day that you have the opportunity to save fished funds and give them back to the victim. This user unfortunately installed a fake version of Trust Wallet via the Google Play Store. We've written about malicious APKs in the past that target cryptocurrency users, but they were hosted on third-party sites. The one we're writing about today was actually in the official Google Play Store, highly ranked, and had a lot of user reviews, downloads, and a decent 3.5 star rating. Again, for the full story, you'll have to check out the weekly bat blog post. This next piece is by the Washington Post. Lawmakers call for more transparency in health agencies' pandemic data collection practices. A growing number of Democratic lawmakers are sounding the alarm about a program launched by the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services to track the spread of the coronavirus. The public health effort, dubbed HHS Protect Now, hoovers up vast amounts of data, including coronavirus test results from the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, as well as state and local sources. It also relies on technology from secretive Silicon Valley firm Palantir, better known for working with the U.S. military, national security agencies, and immigration offices. In a letter shared with the Washington Post and sent Tuesday evening to HHS Secretary Alex Azar, a group of Democratic U.S. senators and members of Congress, including Senator Elizabeth Warren and Richard Blumenthal, call for more transparency around the initiative. 
The letter questioned whether any of the data gathered would be shared with the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement to round up undocumented immigrants. We are concerned that, without any safeguards, data in HHS Protect could be used by other federal agencies in unexpected, unregulated, and potentially harmful ways, said the lawmakers. Roaring fans. Venezuela Valiente from Twitter writes, I have successfully received my June payment for earnings, and also another payment I assume comes from the rewards program. Thanks, Brave and Bat community. We are from Venezuela and we are working very hard for Brave. Don't forget to send us a tip. Calix Wonder tweets, I love my new Brave shirt. It's a perfect fit. Thank you so much, Bat community and Brave, for always making me smile. Have a happy day, everyone. Song Hua from Reddit writes, Brave just purchased almost 600k bat for its ad campaigns. Looks great for July so far. Many advertisers are quitting social media campaigns, so that's good for us. That's a wrap for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in, and if you would like to read the full stories whose headlines we cover on the podcast, be sure to read the accompanying weekly bat blog post. You can find that on batcommunity.org always. Or if you're listening on YouTube, check the description box below the video for a link. And if you're listening on a podcast app or player, check the show notes. 